reaction mechanisms, and not just reaction mechanisms, but we're going to be looking at potential energy diagrams to try to figure out whether a reaction is exothermic or endothermic based on the diagram that's being shown. And then along with that, we're going to be able to label these PE diagrams in order to tell what's our net energy. So is it positive? Is it negative? What's the value of the net energy? So what, what's your energy change? What is, um, where is your activated complex? What's the activation energy of the reaction? What is what is called the total energy released? Or what is um, the value for if you have a catalyst that's added? How does that change things? And so we're going to be really analyzing these diagrams. So before we start here, let's just um, go through the notes a little bit and just fill in some of these blanks. So it says all a reaction mechanism is, it's a series of elementary reactions that take place during the course of a complex reaction. In other words, this is the breakdown of the overall reaction, of the overall reaction into smaller steps. That's all we're going to do is basically what you end up seeing typically is you see reactants and you see products. But the truth of the matter is, usually there are intermediates and possibly catalysts, things that are being formed and then used, um, which we would call an intermediate, that end up happening inside of our reaction. And so what we want to do is we want to check to see what does that mechanism look like and where are these slow steps happening. And so we'll talk a little bit more about that later too. So there's what is called the collision theory. And we already talked a little bit about the collision theory. It says, if colliding particles have enough kinetic energy and they collide at the right orientation, then they can react to form new products. So we said it was based on like two major things. So whether or not they have the right amount of energy, in other words, activation energy. And the other thing is, are they colliding at, in the right, at the right places so that they can form these products? This is called the, what is this called? The collision, collision theory. It is called the collision theory. And according to the theory, by increasing two things of either reactant is going to speed up the reaction. What do you think we can increase two things? Either increasing what? Temperature. Temperature or? or? Concentration. 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 Uh, awesome. Either by increasing the concentration or increasing the temperature then we basically can speed up our reaction. We talked about increasing the surface area as well, if you add a catalyst. What is potential energy? Potential energy diagram is going to help us visualize whether a reaction is either endothermic or exothermic. And we've seen these words before based on either having a release of energy, so exo being losing or releasing that energy, or a net gain of energy where it's being added in, endothermic. So we know that exo we say exit, whereas endo we say what? Enter or into. Perfect. Either enter or into. I like to think of being on a roller coaster at Cedar Point. So it says, let's ride the Magnum. On the way up the first slope, what indication may you have that it requires energy? How do you know that if you've ever been on any roller coaster, how do you know that on your way up requires energy? What are some things that you hear and that you feel that tell you that it requires energy? What do you think? Call it out. It's slow and it's the clicking. Slow. It's slower, it's slowing, and there's clicking. And how do you feel as you're going up the roller coaster? You're being pulled back. Okay, so we know that gravity is pulling you back down. And so it requires energy in order to get up. And so we hear the clicking sound as we're going up. So it says, what happens once the car reaches the top of the slope? Once you get up to the top, what ends up happening? Well, you're confused. How do you feel? You look down, but maybe you don't want to look down. How are you feeling? Scared. Scared, okay. There's this discombobulated feeling, okay, and you're not sure what's going to happen. Are you going to come back down, or are you actually going to make it over and then start coming down that hill? It says, um, so now it's free-flowing, and you're coming down the hill. Your arms are in the air, and you let out a scream to help release the energy. So on our way up, we know that on our way up requires energy. And this is what we're going to call the activation energy. Once you reach the peak, you're a bit discombobulated. These are the disorganized arrangements of your atoms. We call it the activated complex. So the activated complex is at the top where the atoms don't know what they're doing yet. So it's a it's basically a crazy, they don't know what they're bonding with yet, they're unsure if they're going to form products or they're going to come back and form reactants. Then you always get a release of energy on your way down. 
What we call this is we call it the total energy released. If you compare where you started going up, so the beginning of where the roller coaster started, and after coming down that hill, if you end up at a higher place versus a lower place, then that will tell you whether you have a net energy gain or a net energy release. So it says if you started going up the slope to where you ended with, you compare that, and you're now at a lower point, there has been a net release of energy. And so we say that the delta H is negative, and we call that exothermic. If you're at a higher point than your starting point, then delta H is positive and we call that endothermic. So let me explain this. So if you're on a roller coaster ride and you've been on these hills before where you come up and then you end up at a lower point, okay? This is you back here in a cart. And if we could see what your face looked like, you would be smiling because you're like, woohoo, and you're coming down, right? And so you know that there's a net release of energy, but you also have been on, like I was, on the mini Gemini, and they call it the junior Gemini or something like that for the little kids, because my seven-year-old really wanted to ride the roller coaster, but wasn't tall enough to go on the big Gemini. So on that one, so this is going to be a negative because we're actually losing more than what we started. If the other case happens, and it looks something like that, where you're like, arms up, arms up, and then it's like, loop, 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 and you're like, really? Is that it? <laughs> That's all, right? This we're going to actually call positive, okay? And in this case, you're probably like this, okay? And you're like, that wasn't so fun. I'm waiting for the next hill, because maybe that one will be a little bit better, okay? So the idea is if it loses more than where you started, then that's called exothermic. And if there's a net gain of energy where now you actually end up with more energy than what you started with, that's going to be positive and endothermic. Let's recap. The minimum amount of energy that particles must have to produce a chemical reaction is called the Activ what energy? Activation, activation energy. energy. Awesome. That's called the activation energy. And it's given this, it, they just write EA, E subscript A. In a sense, this is a barrier that reactants must cross to be converted into products. The unstable arrangement of atoms at the peak of the activation energy barrier is called the activated complex. Awesome. That's called the activated complex. Again, if there is a net release of energy and the reactants have a higher total energy than the products, then we say that the reaction is, if it's net release, we call it exo, exo perfect, exothermic. So that would be delta H is negative. If the reverse happens and the energy is gained, the products have a higher energy than the reactants, we say the reaction is endothermic. Perfect. And that would be delta H equals a positive value. Delta H is positive. Let's label some PE diagrams. So what it says is we know that the activation energy is the start to the peak. This will always be a positive value, okay? Your EA, activation energy, is always going to be positive. It always requires energy to get up the hill, right? Total energy release, that's from your peak going down, and that's your energy when your arms are up and you're like, woohoo, and you're coming down. That's always going to be energy being released to the bottom. That's always negative. Your net energy is the difference, and your net energy, it depends. If your ending point is higher than the start, so if it looks something like this, that's going to be positive. If you start down here and you end down here, that's going to be negative. We would call this one, at the top one, endothermic, and the bottom one, exothermic. Okay? So that would be negative, delta H, and that would be positive. Basically what you do is you just check your starting point, and you compare it to where you end. It doesn't matter what's happening in the middle. Do you remember what a catalyst is? It's a substance that does what to your reaction? Speeds it up, and the way that it does that is by lowering, lowering the activation energy barrier. And the idea for this would be, if you somehow could find a tunnel to get to the other side, okay, and it was a shortcut, so if you and Grandma are riding bikes, and Grandma's like an amazing bike rider, she's been bike riding for many, many years, <laughs> and you're not so good of a bike rider, and you find a tunnel, tunnel in the middle of the mountain, and then what happens is Grandma goes all the way up the top, and she's coming down, but what you do is you find a shortcut right in the middle, okay? Then that's going to take you, it's lowering your activation energy, you're still going to end at the same place that Grandma does, but... What do you find? Well, it speeds up your rate, okay? It speeds up the rate of the reaction. And what about the energy? Yeah, it's requiring less energy, okay? So it's basically finding a shortcut. 
So it says, without being used up itself, the catalyst lowers the activation energy barrier. So this would be similar to taking a shortcut through a tunnel to get to the opposite side. It's for the chickens or for the people that are like cheaters or no, it's okay. By, the, by adding the catalyst, the activation energy is lowered. And so let's label this and then we'll go, we'll go through and label some of the other ones. So what we want to know is, we also want to know values of these as well. So not only are we going to call it something, but we'll also label the number for it. So A right here, what do you think that would be called? Initial. That's going to be called your activation energy for um, this particular reaction. So that's your activation energy. All right, and the activation energy we said is A. What value would you give the activation energy? Positive 60, awesome. So make sure, and this would be, typically they'll give you your units, they'll either tell you that it's kilojoules per mole or kilocalories per mole. So let's say that it's kcals per mole. Okay, and um, you don't go from zero up. So your activation energy is from this starting point up to the top, okay? So make sure of that. All right, and then what would you call B? Activated complex. Activated complex. And usually they don't, they don't give a value for that. It's just where the activated complex is that's at the peak. All right, what is C? What is C? What do you think that's called? Um, something. Yes, that's adding a catalyst, but what is this representing? What would this value represent? Activation, activation energy with the catalyst. catalyst. Awesome. So I'm just going to call it EA with catalyst. Okay, and what value would you give that? 40. Positive 40. Very good. It's positive 40 kcals per mole. Again, you go from your starting point up to that point. Okay, go from your starting point up. All right, and then what do you think D is representing? What would D be called? Energy released. Energy released. Now, we're going to call it delta H, okay? We're going to call it delta H. It's your change in energy. And so what we're going to do is we're going to say that delta H, in this case, we know it's released, but we're not sure if what the value is. So what would your value be? Well, from 40 to 0 is 40, but from 0 to negative 60 is another what? 60. So add them together, and what do you get? 100. Positive or negative? Why negative? Because the energy is being released. Our net is a net release of energy. So if it ends lower, then it's negative. And again, we would call this kcals per mole or whatever unit they give us. All right, and what is E? Total energy release. Perfect. This is called your TER or your total energy released. And what value would, would you give this? Well, it starts at 100 down to 0 and then 100 down to 60. So what's the total? Negative, negative 160. Perfect. Negative 160. Again, if our units are kcals per mole. And what would F be representing? Total. Yep, TER with catalyst. And what value would you give that? Negative, negative 140. Perfect. Negative 140 kcals per mole. All right, and we're just going to try a couple more of these just to make sure that you have this down. So let's take a second for you to, actually, let's do this and then we can label some of them. So this one's already labeled for you so that you can check to see how you do on that. So again, here we've got a plus 30, we've got our activated complex. This is our total energy released where we say 50 plus 10 gives us 60, negative 60. And then our delta H in this case is a negative 30. Let's just label whether it's exothermic or endothermic. So what would you call this if it ends at a higher point than where you started? Endothermic, good. And what about this one down here? Exothermic. How about letter D? Endothermic, good. And how about letter E? Exo. Exo. Awesome. All right, and um, that's basically it. So if you know uh, how this example works, then you should be able to fill in B, C, and D, and that's it for doing potential energy diagrams.